девочки из We finished talking about uh, beta. We talked about beta for private company. We said we need to change things a little bit when we're talking about the private company. So we, with beta, we were able to calculate the cost of equity for a company. So. Cost of equity is equals to the risk-free rate plus beta times the risk premium. Okay? The risk premium is the same in one country. The beta is different for the company. The risk-free rate is the same for one country. So this tells us the cost of equity tells us how much do investors how much do investors expect us to make as a profit as a return for them to invest the money in our company to buy equity cost of equity how much does it cost for us to get money by equity way okay so we saw for Disney the cost of equity was about 9%. That means that Disney has to pay 9% to its equity investor every year for the equity investor to invest in Disney's company. If Disney is not paying a return of 9% every year, the equity investor won't invest in Disney. Okay? So, this is cost of equity. We're also going to talk about cost of debt. <coughs> cost of debt. Okay. What is the main difference between debt and equity? What is the main difference between debt and equity? We talked about it in the first week or second week. <coughs> Anybody remember the main difference between debt and equity? Can you remember any difference between debt and equity? If I buy stock in a company or if I lend money to a company, what's the main difference? Yes? Equity is mine. Equity is mine. Ownership, right? It's yours, so ownership. Equity, we have ownership or control. Okay? Debt, we don't have ownership. No control, no ownership. The company, okay? If you didn't, couldn't answer that question, you need to write this down, okay? So you know the next time I ask the question. Okay, the second difference is that with equity, the price can go up or down. Okay? And the cost of debt, usually the price doesn't go up or down. So, if I lend, if I buy equity of $50 stock, the stock price can go up or down, but if I lend the company $50 loan, the company still owes me the $50 back, okay? If the company goes bankrupt here, do I get any money back? If the company goes bankrupt, 
No. No, my stock price goes down to zero. If the company goes bankrupt, do I get some money back here? Yes. Yes. Well, how can I get money back? Uh, sell the equipment. Sell, sell the equipment and the stuff, the land, okay, of the company to pay back the debt, okay? So, which do you prefer? If I told you I can give you 5% interest with debt or 5% interest with equity, which one do you prefer? Debt. Debt, why? Because 5% per equity is uh, less amount. So, how, why is it a less amount? Because it's risky and you need to <coughs> more. Okay, so this is risky. Okay, equity is riskier than debt. So therefore, equity should be more expensive than debt. Okay, so which is going to be higher always? Cost of equity or cost of debt? Which one will be higher? Cost of equity will be higher. Okay, Disney's cost of equity is 9%. If Disney gets a loan from the bank, will it be more than 9% or less than 9%? Disney gets a loan from the bank. Is the loan going to be more than 9% or less than 9%? Yes. Less than 9%. If Disney sells bonds, is it going to be more than 9% or less than 9%? Yes. They sell bonds. Instead of getting a loan from the bank, they get a loan from investors directly. Is that going to be more than 9% or less than 9%? They get a loan from the bank. Let's start again. They get a loan from the bank. Will it be more than 9% or less than 9%? Hands up who says more. <coughs> the bank is going to ask Disney for 10% loan. Cost of equity is 9%. Who says less? Hands up. Everybody needs to put up their hand, okay? Who says more? Hands up. Who says less? Okay, the next one is bonds. Disney is selling bonds. Is the bond going to be more than the cost of equity? More than 9% or is it going to be less than the cost of equity? Less than 9%. So who says more than 9% for bonds? Who says less than 9% for bonds? Okay, so it, the majority is correct. The answer is less. That's what I just said, okay? So write it down. The cost of debt is always less than the cost of equity. Okay, write, write down that sentence. The cost of debt is always less than the cost of equity. <coughs> Do you understand why the cost of debt is less? No. No? <coughs> right, we asked the question already. She said it's less risky. <coughs> Do you understand why debt is less risky? Why is debt less risky than equity? Yes, we can. If, if the company goes bankrupt, we can get back the money. Number one, in the worst case. Number two, in the normal case, the stock price goes up and down. Right? The stock price can go down. I can lose my money. But with debt, the loan doesn't go down. The company still has to pay back the loan. Okay? So, if we look at the stock, we could have bought stock in a company like. Uh, MySpace. Do you know MySpace? Before Facebook, there was MySpace in the US. But then Facebook came along and MySpace went down. So my, MySpace, I, I invested in MySpace stock. This price went down from 50 to 1. I lost 90% of my money. Okay? If I lent money to MySpace, they still have to pay me back the loan. My loan didn't go down at all. Okay? I lent MySpace $50. They still have to pay me back $50. MySpace is still in business, it didn't go bankrupt, right? So I got back my loan money, but I lost 90% of my stock money. Can you understand debt is more risky? Or sorry, stocks are more risky than loans? Yes? Okay, so that's why we said in the, when we talked about risk and return, basic theory of finance, you get the return based on the risk. If it's higher risk, you get a higher return. If it's lower risk, you get a lower return. Okay? Debt is lower risk, means we get a lower return. So it makes sense. I asked you, 
if I give you, if I tell you, you can get 5% for lending money to Disney, or you can get a 5% return for buying stock in Disney, which are you going to choose? Lending money or buying stock? Stock. Why? Hmm? You like, but I told you, we figured out, we're going to move into next, calculating return. Disney is only going to make 5% profit next year, right? But anyway, you can get 5% for lending them money. So which do you prefer? Lending. Lending money, okay? So which do you prefer? Your friend is starting a business. He wants money, $10,000 to start a business. He wants you to give him, buy some part of his business, stock in his business for $10,000. Or this friend is starting a business. She wants you to give her a loan of $10,000 for her business. He's going to give you 10% next year. She's going to give you 10% next year. Which one are you going to give $10,000 to? Loan. Loan, right? Why? If you buy stock in his company, his company fails, he doesn't have to pay you back any money. Okay? You give her a loan, her company fails, she still needs to give you back the money. She still owes you the money, right? or she has to sell her things of the company to give you back the money. Really? So, yes? I totally understand about that. So you're saying that equity is just like I buy stocks in a company. Yes. It's the same thing. Yes, but in a public company, you buy stocks. In a private company, you buy part of the ownership of the company. Okay? <laughs> or you could just start your own company. Put your own money in is equity. <clears throat> so, we should be clear now that cost of debt is going to be lower than cost of equity. So, when we put these two things together, we end up with cost of capital. This is called cost of capital. Co capital means money. Capital basically means money. So, this cost of capital means cost of money for the company. So we are going to find out what is our cost of equity, what is our cost of debt, how much percent equity do we have, how much percent debt do we have. So for example in Disney, our cost of equity is 9%. For example, our cost of debt is 5%. Okay? We have 50% equity and 50% debt. For example, um, what is our cost of capital? Can anybody tell me? It costs 9% for equity, that's 50%. It costs 5% for debt, that's 50%. What's our cost of capital? <coughs> Weighted average? Seven. Seven, right? 50 multiplied by 9 is 4.5. 50 multiplied by 5 is 2.5. 7% weighted average. Okay, we get the weighted average of our cost of equity and cost of debt. This is cost of money. How much it costs Disney to get money, right? Debt plus equity, including debt and equity. So, we already know how to calculate cost of equity. So in order to find our cost of capital now, we need to calculate how to get our cost of debt. So the cost of capital, so we're going from the cost of equity to cost of capital, okay, overall for the company. The cost of capital is a composite cost to the company of raising financing to fund its projects. Composite means together. So in addition to equity, firms can raise capital. What's an easy way to say raise capital in English? I write here raise capital because that's what people say in the finance world. So you should understand it, right? But what's an easy way to say raise capital? Hmm? What's another word for capital? Money. Money. What's another word for raise? Make money. Make money increase. Get money, right? So firms can get money from debt. Okay, if you're starting a company or you're a company, you want to make a new project 
for example, we're going to look at Disney. Disney wants to make a new Disneyland in Brazil. Okay? That's a new project. Disney needs money for the project. Where are they going to get the money from? Okay? That's in finance, instead of saying, where are you going to get the money? They would say, where are you going to raise the capital? Okay? So just we need to learn the different vocabulary. Okay? In finance, people will say, raise capital instead of getting money. Getting money sounds too informal. Okay? So we, they have some formal expression. So fir firms can raise capital from debt. So what is debt? We explained debt has these characteristics. Commitment to make fixed payments in the future. Do you understand fixed? Go Jang, is that correct? In Korean? Fixed payments. Does equity give fixed payments? It pays dividends. Is dividends the same every time? No. no. It's not fixed, it's variable. Okay, debt, is it always the same, the interest rate? Yes. I'm, I'm getting 5% interest on my loan? Yes, every month or every year it's the same. The fixed payments are tax deductible. Can I get tax, uh, if I'm a company, can I get a tax deduction on equity? No. Can I get a tax deduction on interest payments on debt? Yes. Do you understand that idea? In, if you pay interest on your debt, you don't have to pay tax on, on the interest on your debt. Okay? Uh, we calculate the tax. If you remember from the income statement, we have EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. Then we have minus uh, interest. Then we have tax. Right? So first we put in minus interest payment, and then we calculate the tax. Okay, so there's debt relief on interest payments. It means that uh, I made a profit, right? Earnings before interest and taxes. I made a profit. And then I'm going to take away my interest payments on the debt from my profit. So I can take this away from my profit so that I can don't pay tax on this. Okay? But if I pay dividends, it's not uh, tax deductible for the company. The dividends is taken out at the end, after tax has been paid, out of my profits. Okay? So, uh, that's why with depreciation, we spread depreciation over years also for tax benefit. So, <laughs> failure to make the payments can lead to either default or loss of control of the firm to the party to whom the payments are due. So we said here, if we don't pay back the loan, failure to make the payments, don't pay back the loan, leads to loss of control of the company. Okay? I don't pay back the loan, I have to give you my, my equipment or my land. Okay? Okay, so debt should include any interest-bearing liability, short-term or long-term, any lease obligation. Operating or capital. Do you understand leash? Lease? What is a lease? What, what does lease mean? Uh, hmm? Like a, a long term. What kind of things do we lease usually? Cars. Cars. Computers sometimes. Buildings. Right? So sometimes also for tax purposes. Companies will lease cars or lease buildings because why? The interest on the lease, they can write off the tax on that part. Okay? So they get some tax benefit. Especially in the US, the tax is quite high. Corporation tax is quite high, about 35%. So it means that if I make a lease, I'm going to save 35% of the interest payment. Okay? Because I can just deduct the interest payment from the my profit before I calculate the tax. So it means I'll save 35% of my interest payment. Practically, my interest will be 35% cheaper on the lease. Another reason why businesses use lease leases? Why would a business lease cars instead of buying cars? We talked about under uh, three of the product determinants for beta. We said one of them was fixed against the variable costs, right? So if a company leases a car, is that a fixed cost or a variable cost? Fixed. 
Variable. Variable costs. If they buy a car, it's fixed costs. Okay? So if they lease a car, it means that this year business is very good. No problem. Next year business is bad. Okay? I stop the lease. I don't lease the car next year. Okay? So my cost goes down. Whereas if I bought a lot of cars at the start, then uh, what will happen is that business is bad next year. I have three or four cars just sitting in my I parked outside my office. I'm not using them. Okay? That's a fixed cost. I already paid for the car. I'm going to have the depreciation. I can't change that, even though I'm not using the car. So even nowadays, the, some airline industry, some airlines started up business where they just leased the airplane instead of buying the airplane. Because what happens if their customers go down? Then they can just stop the lease of the airplane. Right? Don't renew the lease the next year. So it's the same for buildings. Some companies lease an office because maybe the business won't go well. So instead of buying the office, if we lease the office, we can just change the location very easily of, the, of our business, right? Or just we can make rent a smaller office instead next year rather than a big office. We don't need a big office, right? So we can see that companies often use leases for equipment especially if they're not sure about the demand for the equipment. Is there going to be high demand or low demand? Also, they lease buildings. So how do we find out the cost of debt? So one, one easy way for the famous companies is that they, they trade their bonds on the market. So we can, we can see the interest rate on their bond. So we can see Disney is selling bonds. Disney is a famous company. What is the interest rate on Disney's bonds? It's quite simple, right? Uh, then, if, we do, if they're not trading their bonds, but the firm got a rating from the rating agency, like Moody's or Standard & Poor's, or so on, then we can look at their rating. Is their rating the same as Disney? Yes, then their cost of debt is the same as Disney's, right? So we can try and find the rating of the company, Okay, and then we use a default spread on bonds, we'll look at later, to estimate the cost of debt. So, <coughs> let's have a look at this uh, link. This is a corporate bond spreads. So if the company is rated this this one, right? Then it means uh, this is the U.S. Treasury at the bottom. Uh, let's say the U.S. Treasury 10-year we're familiar with is uh, 2.73, okay, for the 10-year U.S. government bond. What about the other companies? This is a corporate. This is rating for companies, right? So even though a company is rated AA, it's still going to be 42 basis points above the US. Is that 48 or is that 0 0.48? This one. They don't put the 0 point here, but it's 0 0.42. So this, if your company is rated AAA, it's a company rating, not a country rating. Okay? So it's a little bit more risky than the US government. Does that make sense? Should companies always be more risky than the government, the US government? Yes. The US government can collect taxes to pay back its debt, right? But the company can't collect taxes to pay back its debt. So company, who do you prefer to lend money to, the US government or the company? Even a very, very safe company, the most safe company, or the US government, who do you prefer to lend money to? US Still the US government, right? How much more will you do? We can look at this table, it will tell us, right? If the US government is 2.72, then the company, the safest company, will be 2.72 plus 0 0.42, okay, 3.14, okay? So you will accept 3.14% from a very safe company, interest payment, right? So then it moves down. It's going to be, if you see a company which is rated B, 
BBB plus, you're going to ask that company for 1.15. So it's going to be 3.87%. Okay? From this company will be the cost of debt. So we can figure out by coming to this table, we can find the rating of a company. What rating is your company? Okay? They have different ratings. This is Moody's, does like this way. S&P does this way. Okay? So what does the S&P rating mean? Okay? So if our company is rated CCC plus, it's the worst rating, then we expect to get 10% uh, for a 10-year bond, 10% bond, interest. Okay? <coughs> So, do you understand this corporate, corporate company, bond, we're talking about bonds, and spread. What does spread mean? Spread means the difference. When you see spread in, in finance, it means the difference between. So the corporate bond spread means, what is the difference between the, US, the government bond and the corporate bond, right? So you should write this down if you don't know. Spread means the difference between. Okay? Difference between, here they don't have to say corporate bond spread with government bonds. We already know it's government bonds. So they don't write that. Okay? They just talk about the corporate bond spread. So it means how much is the difference between the corporate bond and the government bond. Okay? So we know that you guys would prefer to invest in government bonds than corporate bonds, right? But it depends. If I, if I look at a company like Disney, I might say, well, I don't think Disney is going to go bankrupt in the next 10 years. Disney has been here since 1920. So if Disney is rated AA-, minus, it means I can get an extra 0.6% a year from Disney. So maybe I'll invest in Disney, right? I still think it's very safe. I get a higher percentage, right? So you have that decision to make as an investor. Which, which uh, company do I want to buy bonds in? Okay, or which, do I want to buy government bonds? So it depends on your risk. Many investment funds, they won't invest in anything which is rated like below here. They'll have a rule, the fund will have a rule. If you're rated down here, I won't invest. Like pension fund, like Korean government pension fund, does the Korean government pension fund want to invest in two risky assets? No, right? It's a pension fund, so it wants to make sure at least there will be some money for the older people in, when they get retired, right? So they will invest up here. So people have a decision. What, what kind of bond do I want to invest in? So... <coughs> The next one is if we don't have a rating for the bond, what can we do? So if we look at Bookscape, Bookscape is, uh, was our example of a small bookstore. Okay, they're not rated. For our company to be rated, we, we're only going to rate our company if we want to sell bonds. If we don't want to sell bonds, we're not going to have our company rated. Okay. Why? Because we pay for the rating. I pay for the rating agency to come to my company. They're going to spend a few weeks in my company. They're going to analyze everything about my company. And they're going to give me a rating. But I pay for that. Okay? One of the reasons I pay for that is I want to sell bonds in the bond market. Are people going to buy bonds in the bond market if your company has no rating? Would you buy, prefer to buy a bond for a company that has a rating or no rating? Rating. Rating, okay. You know, you, have, you could go to that company and check everything and find out how risky the company it is. That's going to take you weeks of your time. You don't want to do that. You want the rating agency to tell you how risky the company is, okay? Now, sometimes the rating agency can be wrong. We saw in the financial crisis that they gave ratings of AA to... Uh, Wall Street banks, which weeks later went bankrupt, like Lehman Brothers, right? They can make mistakes, but most of the time they are correct, okay? So people don't want to go to the company and find their own rating. They just trust the rating agencies, usually, okay? 
So, if I want to sell bonds, I need to call the rating agency and say, hey, can you come to my company and give me a rating? And they'll say, yes, okay, but you have to pay me some money, okay? So some companies don't want to do that. Small bookstore, are you going to pay the rating agency to come give you a rating? No. No, right? So we have to find out the cost of debt for the small company. What is the cost of debt? Okay? So if we can find out the interest rate from it got a loan from the bank, then okay, we know that the company's uh, cost of debt, right? Whatever the bank charged them. Otherwise, we can estimate a synthetic rating for the company and use this rating to arrive at a cost of debt. So we'll talk about it later. We can estimate our own rating for the company quickly. So uh, the cost of debt has to be estimated in the same currency as the cost of equity. So if we're doing our calculation in dollars, the cost of debt also has to be in dollars. If it's in Korean won, some Korean companies get loans in US dollars, right? So you have to decide which currency are we going to do our calculation in. So estimating the synthetic rating for the small, small company. So we can use the interest coverage rate, ratio. The interest coverage ratio is earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT over interest expenses. So if we do this for our companies, we can see Disney. This is their EBIT, operating income. This is their interest expense, the amount of interest they pay every year. Okay? So what we're doing is we're comparing their interest payments to their profit okay? to get an idea of their uh, cost of debt. So here we find an interest coverage ratio of 8.31. Okay? So EBIT over interest payments. In Ara Cruz we find 3.70. Tata Chemicals 5.15 and Bookscape 6.22. So then we go to a table. We have a table. Uh, we have two rows. The first one is small companies, less than $5 billion. Most companies will be here. The other one is large companies, more than $5 billion. Disney will be here. Okay? So here we have the interest coverage ratio. And we, we can make this interest coverage ratio into a rating, and we can make the rating into the spread on the, on the government bond, okay? So, uh, if we have Disney, first one, Disney's market capitalization is more than five billion, it's bigger, more than five billion. Market cap means stock, number of stocks multiplied by stock price. Okay, that tells us the size of a company. How many stocks do you have? How much does each stock cost? That's your market capitalization. Okay, we can find this also on Yahoo Finance. So uh, this is AA. According to this, Disney has AA rating and spread here. Ara Cruz. The other companies are all less than five billion. So Ara Cruz, 3.7 is going to be here. So rating of BB plus and spread of 4%. Yes? Yes, estimate the rating when we don't know. So for example, the company won't tell us how much the bank charges them for a loan. Okay? Or, we, or it's a non-rated company. So Disney is a rated company. But you could have some companies in emerging economies that don't have any rating, possibly. Okay? Or just a small private company, and you, you can't look at the books of the private company. They don't want to tell you about how much their loan from the bank costs. So you can estimate how much is their cost of debt by looking at their profit against their interest expense. Okay? You can find their interest expense in their uh, income statement. Okay? How much they pay on their interest expense. You can find in their income statement. So we get their uh, ratio by dividing their EBIT by their interest expenses and then we put their ratio into this table so we put our book company 
we looked at last year what happened in the book company. We said the book company made a profit, let's say three thousand three million five hundred and seventy-five dollars, right? Or three thousand whatever. And then they had this interest expense, five hundred and seventy-five thousand. So the ratio was six point two two. So we went to the table. We see here this is six point two two. So it's rated A. And we are going to add 2.5% to the US government bond rate. And then we, we know the cost of debt for this company. We can estimate the cost of debt for this company. So, <coughs> Disney and Ara Cruz are rated companies. But their actual ratings are different than the synthetic rating. We made the synthetic rating with the interest coverage ratio. Disney's synthetic rating is AA but its actual rating is A. This difference is explained by the following points. The synthetic rating only reflects the interest coverage ratio, whereas actual ratings show all of the factors, 